I remember my therapist ended up telling me, Bubba, you should just sit down right now. We should talk about this. And instead of sitting across from me, she sat beside me and she put her hand on my thigh and things got insane. Yo, what is going on, you guys? My name's Bubba and welcome back to another really embarrassing, but I gotta say extreme story. So this story all takes place back when I was in grade 12 or actually three months after I graduated grade 12. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm gonna confess the truth here. I had major anger issues. I'm not gonna lie to this day. I feel like I still have some anger issues here and there but honestly i've learned to detain it down and basically calm down i guess and i guess one of the ways i do that is by telling these really embarrassing stories about my life but i remember basically back when i was in grade 12 or just graduating like i said earlier i had major anger to the point where the way i would kind of release my anger was doing the devil's tango with other women it wasn't to the point where i would do the devil's tango for my own satisfaction it got to the point where i would do it just so i could let my anger out and obviously that leads to a lot of dark stuff and i'm not gonna lie to you i made a video on the channel about it but i will say this it really made me not proud of who i was as a person especially after high school because obviously after high school when you graduate things start to change life really starts hitting you in a different way and things get more serious in life but i remember around this time I, my parents really started to notice that i started getting angry more easily and basically that led to them actually one time walking up to me in my bedroom saying bubba do you think maybe it's good for you to get a therapist just you know to release yourself what mom no i don't want to take therapy therapy's dumb now if you guys did not know and already realized back when i was younger or even still actually nowadays i'm not gonna lie to you i don't believe therapy is real i don't believe therapy is actually something that is useful or helpful or actually even worth putting your money into obviously i don't know many people like therapy but for me i was never a fan of it because who wants to sit there just talking to a random stranger about all your issues like you could do that with literally anyone and the advice they give back is just another question that you have to deal with and make you i guess go to a realization but obviously at this time i believe therapy wasn't for me and still isn't but going on with the story i remember my mom was really convinced and one thing led to another she ended up opening her laptop in front of me and she started opening up different therapy clinics to basically send me to and me i like basically didn't want to go because i already felt like in my mind i already had an escape to basically releasing my anger which was me doing the devil's tango but obviously i didn't want to tell my mom that so i remember it got to the point where basically she ended up telling me okay bubba i booked you an appointment for this therapy just try it out just see if you enjoy it please bubba okay mom i'll do it is what i told her and the next day came around and me and my mom we drove over down to this therapy clinic now when we got to the place i remember i ended up sitting down just in the waiting room when my mom went to go check me in and i was just kind of sitting there looking at all the signs that basically you know have like motivational speeches on it but me obviously i hated them i ended up just looking down and i ended up going on my phone actually playing clash of clans and i remember 20 minutes went by and out of nowhere i ended up seeing this really really hot lady that was wearing a really tight skirt walk up to me and say oh you must be bubba i remember i ended up looking up to see who i was talking to and out of nowhere i am not joking my jaw dropped and my eyes went wide like i was mesmerized and aroused by how this girl looked like she looked amazing because she was so hot and on top of that her cherries were literally popping out of her button up shirt like i was mind blown and i was so attracted to her and i looked at her saying uh yeah that's that's me what's up she ended up looking at me smiling and she said well i'm ready for you in my office now uh okay cool cool and me and her we ended up going to the office and we ended up basically sitting across from each other and she basically told me to start talking about myself so that's exactly what i did i told her i was a gamer i told her that you know i would do the devil's tango a lot with many different types of women and how i had goals and dreams of becoming while well, a professional gamer of some sorts or you know just anything really i don't know at this time right after i graduated i won't lie to you i didn't really know where i was going with life like i said earlier so obviously i was just trying to basically tell her like the, the basic lines of myself of who i am and what i want to be but as i was saying all this one thing i found really weird about this therapist was that randomly at certain moments she'd be like oh like i don't know you could be a model like are you sure you want to be like a gamer oh so like do you ever see yourself i don't know maybe like being on the devil's hub from how much of the devil's tango you do and she would ask me all these questions that sounded like good normal questions to ask a normal person but at the same time the way she would say them is like in a flirtatious way it got to the point where i'm not gonna lie to you i ended up just kind of zoning out every time she talked because i ended up looking at her cherries instead because well it was either that or i look at the sign behind her that was of a cat saying something motivational so i ended up just staring at her cherries and honestly 100 that this therapist definitely no 
noticed that I was doing that. And she looked at me and said, Baba, you do realize my eyes are up here, right? Uh, yeah, sorry. No, I just, uh, I'm just zoned out, I guess. I guess you could say it's from me doing the devil's tango. And at that moment, I guess she looked at me and said, Baba, what makes you angry? Now, obviously, there was a lot of answers to this question, but one thing I did end up saying was, oh, you know, I guess, like, people, like, really, like, pushing my buttons, I guess, and just, like, you know, being rude about it. Because at the time, I'm not gonna lie, every time she, like, would say something, it sounded like she was trying to press my buttons more than actually, you know, be a therapist. I remember it got to a point where a therapy session was over because her phone ended up ringing, and, yeah, one thing led to another. That was the end of our first session together. Now, obviously, I ended up getting up and leaving, but as I was leaving out the front door, I remember she put her hand on my shoulder and said, I really hope you come back. And she walked away. Now, I'm not gonna lie. At this moment, I got bricked. I'm not gonna lie. I was severely bricked and I was really just attracted to this therapist. And I remember as I was on the way home with my mother, my mom looks at me and says, so Bubba, what do you think about the session? Do you think you're going to go again? Oh, I'm definitely going back is what I told my mom. And my mom ended up smiling. I remember one week went by and I ended up going back to see this therapist. And when I went to go see her, I remember I got really excited and I decided to wear something more, I guess, appealing to the average woman. And basically I ended up heading down there. When I got there, I ended up sitting in the waiting room waiting for her. I saw that she was already with a different client, but I could just tell from the way she was interacting with this other person, she didn't feel the same as what she did with me. Like, for example, she wasn't in any way, you know, flirtatious. She wasn't touchy. She didn't really like, you know, stare at him like the way she would look at me. So I knew there was definitely a difference between me and other clients that she had. And I remember when she saw me at the waiting room, she ended up running up to me, surprisingly, and actually giving me a hug and say, hey, Bubba, I missed you. Welcome back. Uh, do you want to head into the office right now? Uh, yeah, I guess it's my time, isn't it? Oh, yeah, of course it's your time, silly. And I remember this therapist ended up grabbing my wrist and actually dragging me to her office and shutting the door and locking it. Now, the first time I met this therapist, she didn't lock the door, but this time she apparently did for some reason, which got me really questioning what was going to go on here. I remember this therapist looks at me and tells me, Bubba, you should sit down. Uh, okay, yeah. So tell me, how has your week been? Have you been releasing anger recently? And I already knew what she meant by this question, because like I said earlier, the way I would release anger was me doing the devil's tango. But I ended up being honest with her saying, uh, no, nah, I haven't done it at all, to be honest, is what I told her. And she said, oh, well, like, maybe I should help you out with that. I remember this therapist ended up taking off everything right in front of me. And she said, do you like it, Bubba? And well, one thing led to another. This therapist got me bricked and we ended up doing the devil's tango at the therapy office. Now, I don't know if this was part of the therapy, but to be honest, in my mind, it probably wasn't. Maybe this therapist was just in the mood and, you know, she found the best person that could do it with her. And that was me because I was the master of doing the devil's tango. But one thing I will say is that my mind was blown when this was happening. I remember we were in there for a good, like, hour and a half and her phone alarm went off and basically she had to get ready as fast as possible for her next client after she put everything on she ended up walking me out of her office and said i hope that released your anger for this session and ended up basically letting me go at that moment i'm not gonna lie to you i guess the therapy ended up becoming release anger therapy i have really no idea what that was but i remember from weeks on end for i want to say a month and a half that's the only thing we would do every time i went to her office i would go there do the devil's tango and basically come back home. But then I'm not going to lie to you. Months later on, I ended up stopped seeing this therapist because, well, I ended up getting a girlfriend and I decided to stay loyal to her and basically cut off the therapist. Even though my girlfriend knew I was going to therapy, she found it hilarious how I ended up just stopping going to therapy for her. But I just told her I graduated therapy because, well, I was already the master of doing the devil's tango. Anyways, but the real question is, would you guys do your therapist? And if you would, then just fall for more embarrassing stories. Peace out, guys. I remember when I walked into my counselor's office, I ended up looking around confused on why she wasn't there and then out of nowhere she ended up coming in but she was wearing nothing but a robe like what was she doing yo what is going on you guys my name is bubba and welcome back to another really embarrassing story so this story all takes place back when i was in high school and this was actually my grade 10 year now in grade 10 i'm not gonna lie to you i never had good experiences with the counselors in my high school like i never understood why counselors were even a thing in high school because let's be real here if you're really having a hard time are you really gonna go to the one person that only cares about your education system like, I think the counselors are only really useful when it comes to actually getting you inside a university or a college, not for actual counseling. But I remember basically there was one time where in my grade 10 year, I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't doing the best in school. I'm not going to lie. I would usually skip school to go out and do the devil's tango with many different women. And it got to a point where my absences started becoming a real problem with the school system. And I remember there was one time when I was sitting in my homeroom class and I was just basically trying to catch up on some work. And as I'm just 
writing down a bunch of things on a piece of paper. Out of nowhere, I ended up seeing my teacher walk up to me, my homeroom teacher. She walks up to me and says, Bubba, um, I'm not gonna lie to you. You've been absent a lot recently, and apparently the counselor wants to go and talk to you. She wants to talk to me, is what I said. Uh, yeah, apparently it's something about your grades and basically what your future holds for you. I don't really know. I ended up looking at her really confused, and I just said, you know what, whatever. And I ended up basically getting up from my chair and started heading towards the counselor's office. Now, I think this was gonna be one of the first times I ever went to go see the counselor. And the funny part was, was that the counselor that was already there in our school at the time was not one that was actually like permanently supposed to be in our school system. So I was literally about to go talk to a counselor that wasn't even supposed to be the actual counselor. Going on with the story though, I remember I ended up going to the office and when I did, I sat down on the side, basically waiting for her to let me in. But as I was waiting, I remember someone else came out of her office and it was a young girl. And this girl ended up coming out and started crying over and over again because apparently she got like a B in her grade. I have really no idea, but she started like sobbing and crying when she came out of that office. And I knew this was definitely going to be the end of me until it wasn't because I remember what happens next. Honestly, it was really surprising because when I got up and I ended up going into her office, I ended up seeing a really hot lady sitting there with her cherries out and she just looked really, really good. Like I am not joking. Like I was really surprised that a counselor was wearing a really nice, like thin black dress. Like she looked really, really good. And when I looked at her, I ended up having my eyes open wide and I looked at her saying, Hey, like what's going on? I'm Bubba. Hi Bubba. Yeah. I need to talk to you. So can you just sit down with me real quick? Uh, yeah, sure. What's up? I basically ended up trying to play it cool, I guess in a way. I don't really know what kind of person says what's up to their teacher, but at the same time, if you do, I guess comment it down below. But I remember I sat down and I basically ended up saying like, Oh, so like, what's the problem? Uh, yeah. So the thing is Bubba, apparently you have a lot of absences on your attendance. Can you tell me why that is? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. I just haven't been really feeling myself lately. I don't know. I just don't want to be in school sometimes, I guess I could say, which was a totally big lie because there was no way I was actually going to tell the counselor that the reason I was not showing up to school was to go do the devil's tango. So obviously I remember from there, she ended up looking at me saying, okay, well, Bubba, if there's something going on at home, you know, you can talk to me, right? Like I am your counselor, which in reality, she actually wasn't, but I ended up just saying, yeah, uh, that's all good. Yeah, I understand. I'll come in here if I do need to talk to you, I guess. Okay, good. Also, I do want to see you regularly now. So if you can come in at least every day before your third block, that would be fantastic. Wait, what? Why? Because obviously I don't want you running off and I rather rather you be actually in school. And this is my way of knowing. Okay, sure. You know what? Whatever. At that moment, I remember I got up and left the counselor's office really upset because obviously who would want to go to the counselor's office every day? It was already bad enough. I had to go there that day. But let me tell you guys, things went from worse to, I want to say better because the next day when I ended up showing up to my counselor's office, I ended up sitting down with her and she told me, so how are you feeling today? Do you feel like running off? Uh, no, I'm in school, aren't I? Is what I told her. Yeah, you are in school. Um, okay. So I do have a couple questions though, I want to ask you. Yeah, sure. Shoot. What are they? Okay. Well, first thing, how do you feel about your future? My future? Where do you see yourself going in like the next like five years from now? Now, I'm not going to lie to you at this time. I did not know what my future held for me. Like I did not know back when I was in grade 10 that I was going to be a YouTuber telling you the stories about my life. So I ended up looking at her saying, oh, I don't know, maybe like a businessman of some sort. So I would like to, you know, be in business, I guess. I, I don't really know, to be honest. I really don't have a plan. And do you feel sad that you don't have a plan? What? Why should I feel sad? And at that point, she started questioning me on things that that honestly, I wasn't really sure I really knew the answers to. And if my life was actually going to be meaningful five years from now, honestly, it got me really sad and really just not happy to be there. And honestly, for a counselor that's supposed to make me happy to be in school, she really did the opposite. But after when I started to feel sad, I ended up putting my head down and my counselor noticed. And she decided to stand up, sit in the chair beside me, and she put her hand on my thigh. She said, Baba, don't worry. You're still a very charming man. And honestly, you will be something one day. I promise you that. Boy, was she not wrong. But one thing I will say, damn, this counselor put her hand on my thigh, bro. Like she definitely wanted some. Obviously at this time, I didn't notice that obviously because well, I was actually really sad about my five years in the future time, I guess. But I remember I ended up looking at her and I said, really? Like you think so? Yeah, Baba, I'm sure you're holding a lot of great things for your future. And I remember me and her, we ended up having like an eye to eye moment until another student walked in saying, oh, uh, is it my turn to talk to you, Miss Counselor? And yeah, I got up, I ended up leaving and she ended up 
winking at me as she was sitting across from the other student that just walked in as I was leaving the door. And at that moment, I knew something was definitely up between me and the counselor, but I wasn't sure what exactly until what happens next. Because I remember the next thing that ends up happening was I ended up showing up the next day. And the next day when I showed up, I remember I ended up sitting down with her. And when I sat down, I said, hey, like, how's it going? Oh, good. Now that you're here. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I just want to talk to you about yesterday. I kind of thought what I wanted for my future. At that moment, I remember I ended up telling her like basically like my plan about going to school and stuff, which none of it ever ended up happening. Thanks to you guys for actually following the channel and basically watching these stories. But going on with the story, I remember she ended up basically like, you know, being happy that I found out my future. And then she ended up asking me the one question that I really did not think of at the time. So Bubba, do you ever see yourself? I don't know, maybe getting married in the future? Married is what I told her. And I didn't really know what to say at this moment. I never thought about actually being in a heavy relationship back when I was in grade 10, because the only thing I was good at was, well, you guys may know it as the devil's tango. And that was the only thing I actually knew and cared about. Obviously, I wasn't going to tell her that. So I said, uh, yeah, you know, if I meet the right woman, then obviously I would want to marry her and yeah, I guess, you know, get married and stuff. But that's a really rare chance. She ended up looking at me kind of in question. And she said, well, Bubba, what is your ideal woman? At that moment, I started like describing like, you know, I want to be attractive. I want her to be friendly. I want her to be, you know, someone that likes me for me. You know, all the typical stuff that the average kid would say if they had to describe their dream crush or, you know, girlfriend or whatever. And basically she looks at me and she ends up standing up once again. She came up and sat beside me and said, you know, you just described me, right? Huh? And at that moment, I remember she ends up turning my head towards her and she ends up kissing me. My counselor literally made out with me for like a good 10 minutes with her. And then out of nowhere, I ended up saying, wait, what if another student walks in? Oh, don't worry about it, Bubba. No one's going to walk in. I canceled everything else today. And at that moment, she ended up basically unbuttoning her shirt. And well, I'm not going to say any more than that. Other than me and her, we ended up doing the Duvel's Tango. At that moment, my mind was blown. I did not realize that I just did the Duvel's Tango with my counselor. But at the same time, it wasn't a surprise. Because like I said, the only thing I was good at back in high school was was doing the Duvel's Tango. I remember me and her would have these regular appointments of doing the Duvel's Tango afterwards. And I'm not going to lie to you. One month later, she ended up actually leaving the school system because once again, like I said earlier in the story, she wasn't supposed to be my actual counselor. And well, I guess she took me out of like the counseling system because well, the new counselor that came back that was supposed to be our original counselor never wanted to see me. So in a way, I guess she kind of made my school year more exciting like a counselor should have. But if you watch the story till the end, make sure you guys follow for more embarrassing stories just like this one. Peace out, guys. Okay, so one thing you guys should know about me is that I'm not really one for gang affiliation. Like, don't get me wrong. I get it out there. There's actual gangsters that are willing to die, you know, for a brother or another. But for me specifically, I'm not going to lie to you. If there's such thing as gangs out there, I'd rather not be a part of one because me being a, in a gang is like me basically spitting in God's face, asking for forgiveness at the same time. It's just super bizarre to me because like, you know, you're loving someone so much, but yet it's just such a dangerous thing to be in. But at the same time, though, one thing I will say is that today's story does get insane because, well, let's just say I was almost a part of a gang affiliation and basically let's just say dating a mafia boss's daughter isn't easy but let's just get straight into this insane story yo what is going on you guys my name's bubba and welcome back to another crazy story so today's story is honestly a quick one because honestly i'm not gonna lie to you i knew what i was getting myself into and had to jump out of it instantly but honestly the story starts off back when i was in high school you see back in high school i was just a basic kid that literally did whatever walked you know if it was walking i'm going to do the devil's tango with it and i remember one time there was a new girl in our school who recently just joined in except a lot of people did not want to be around this girl for some reason and i remember i walked up to one of the girls that i already was like good friends with and yes i did do the devil's tango with her as well and i asked her the basic common question of why don't you like this girl i remember she looked at me and she told me oh like like apparently like she's like really gangstery and like i don't know like she says she could kill all of us with like one phone call i had no idea what this meant i, I guess like calling the police in my mind was like was the first thing i was thinking about because who else could you call to kill people? I have no idea. In my mind, I'm gonna be honest here. The only time I heard about gangsters was literally in probably Grand Theft Auto. Other than that, if it wasn't from GTA, well then I don't know who else is she gonna call other than the Green Gang. So I remember basically I decided to decide that it would be smart for me to maybe walk up to her and have a conversation with her. Either I just walk up to her and you know try to pull some riz, or I just say hello and realize that this was a mistake and just basically walk away. Anyways, the whole point is I want to go talk to this girl. All right, so that's what I did. I remember I ended up 
walking around the school with one of my buddies to basically find who this girl was. And honestly, she stuck out like a sore thumb in a crowd of people. Like anyone could really notice her. Cause I remember when I looked into this crowd of people that was literally in like the foyer of our school where everyone was surround before school started. She was definitely sticking out because she was wearing this outfit that like made her seem super odd. Like it was such a girly girl outfit, but at the same time, everything she was wearing was more expensive than my, well, entire outfit. Like no joke, including my backpack and the textbooks in it. It was super weird and I found it super funny. So I remember I decided to walk up to her and when I did, I remember she saw me and she looked the other way. Now this is the one time I'm actually going to say this. This is the one girl that I've seen actually not interested in me. As a guy who actually like, you know, goes around and, you know, basically does the devil's tangle. With almost every chick, this one girl was just not interested in me whatsoever. So I remember I did the same thing. Because once a girl shows no interest to you, you show them the same thing back. You show no interest. And since this girl was always begging for attention, apparently from a bunch of other guys wanting her, I remember one time I ended up basically sitting in the cafeteria and when she walked in, a bunch of guys decided to stand up and go say hello to her. As for me, I sat there and I basically ignored her. I remember she saw me and she looked at me and she knew that that one time I was going to approach her, but I didn't because I walked away, right? Because she didn't want my attention. But this time when I was in the cafeteria, I decided to not even, you know, notice she was there. So what did she end up doing? Well, since I made the alpha male move of not going towards my prey and waiting for her to come to me, I basically waited and she did exactly that. She walked up to me saying, oh, like, hey, like, I never got your name. What was it again? And that's when I introduced myself and decided to pull my prey in. That sounded so bad since I'm talking about high school, but to be honest, like, in a way, it, it was a part of the method, okay? That's all I'm saying. Going on from there, though, I remember I was basically just talking to, like, you know, this girl as she was literally right in front of me and there was, like, like, a bunch of guys surrounding her as well, so it made the conversation more awkward. But I remember I just basically told her some basic things about myself, like, I drove a car, I'm handsome, I actually make money on, like, the buffoons behind you. Like, I said all the basic stuff that, you know, she basically wanted to hear and what most women want to hear. Because let's be real here, if you walk up to a girl and say, yeah, I play video games for eight hours a day, make videos on it, and basically just sit and jerk off, there's no way, and I mean, no way, she's going to be interested in you. So I just told her what she wanted to hear, and she ended up liking me, and uh, one thing led to another, she ended up wanting to hang out after school. After the first day of me hanging out with this girl, she wanted to hang out with me after school. I have no idea what magical powers I possessed, but let's just say the alpha male status that we're learning from Sneeko and Andrew Tate today are really showing me the ways of life. That sounds really bad because there's a lot of beef between Moist Critical and Sneeko that I really want to talk about, but we'll save that for another video. Anyways, going on with the story, I remember basically I ended up meeting up with this girl after school and we ended up talking to her and ended up being really nice to her actually. Me and her, we actually really got along as we were just, you know, in my car driving around and basically doing the same thing over and over again because I was driving laps around the block that I was living on because I didn't really want to bring her home to be honest because I knew my parents were not going to be happy with this kind of girl because, you know, she was one of those girls that basically thinks they earned everything or deserved everything. So I remember I ended up telling her, oh, like, what house do you live in? I remember I ended up typing down her address to just basically take her home because there was no way I was going to bring this girl home and do the devil's tango. And I remember when I ended up basically putting down her address, I realized that she lived in a nice area of our neighborhood and she lived in like the hills, basically, as we call it down here in Vancouver. And me knowing this, I was actually very surprised. So what I decided to do was I basically ended up driving her home. And when I got to her place, I saw she lived in an awesome mega mansion. Like, no joke. She lived in like one of those giant houses that have so much space to the point where you don't even know what to do with it. So I remember I ended up basically parking my car in her driveway and me, as I'm like, you know, just telling her to like basically get the hell out of my car. I'm actually like, terrified of you because you're so rich. She ended up looking at me saying, oh, like, do you want to like come inside? Uh, sure. Is what I ended up telling her. So I ended up basically getting out of my car and I ended up basically walking into her house with her. When we walked in, I realized that there were some people at the door basically kind of like looking kind of sketchy, looking at her and basically looking at me as if they wanted to literally beat me to a pulp. But luckily this girl was there to be like my lord and savior and she basically just let me pass through and me and her we were basically walking around the house and she was showing me around and one thing i realized that there was a lot of this one certain symbol that i don't know how to draw it for you i don't remember it to this day but i remember there was a symbol that was like basically around the house that i realized in like most paintings as well i didn't ask about it because i didn't know what it was but then afterwards two minutes later i remember as this girl was like showing me like her bedroom almost or getting to her bedroom out of nowhere i see this guy in a white suit kind of fat you know kind of overweight look at me and say hey who are you and he had like this really like heavy like russian accent i didn't know what to say so i remember i turned around and said oh hi like my name is bubba i ended up shaking his hand and he looked at me saying what are you doing here i ended up looking at him and i told him like basically how like you know i'm friends with his daughter at school and like you know i am nothing special i am just a friend is basically what i was trying to get across to him i remember he looked at me and started chuckling and then he shook my hand and uh when he shook my hand i remember i saw this same symbol tattooed on his wrist and then that's when i knew this guy's some kind of boss ring 
ring leader, cult leader, something that's going to basically get me killed. So I remember he ended up saying, okay, we'll have fun now. And he ended up walking away. But as he walked away, two other like mafia members basically ended up just walking up like, you know, behind him and looking at me, staring at me like they were going to literally beat me to a pulp. I can't express that enough. I was actually terrified. So I remember I was standing there thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to go into her bedroom. And that's what I did. I went into a bedroom and me and her, we kind of got cuddly together. And we started watching a movie on this giant TV that she had in her room. And I look at her and say, so like, what does your dad do for work? Because I was generally curious. And apparently she told me, oh, like, I don't know. I can't really like talk about it. Because like, I don't know. Apparently the government's after him today. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's some weird stuff. The government's after him is what I said afterwards. Yeah. Um, the government, if you're listening, reminder, this was like five to six years ago. So if you're already like coming after my door to basically figure out who they are, I'm telling you right now, I have no idea where they went. But going on, I remember basically from there, I ended up, you know, basically cuddling with her still. And we ended up doing the devil's tango. But right after, I remember, I don't know where I heard the door knock, but it wasn't like a normal knock. Like your mom's going to walk in and give you cookies. It was one of those knocks where like basically she, like it was like someone's going to kill you kind of knock. So me being terrified, I remember I ended up trying to put on my clothes as fast as I can, but she couldn't put on her clothes fast enough because apparently she was slow as balls. So she ended up telling me to basically jump out the window. So that's what I did. I jumped out the window and ran towards my car, but I realized that my car was surrounded by men that were basically going to kill me if I ran towards my car, almost basically not wearing anything. So what I decided to do was I basically ended up calling my dad to come pick me up and I left her car there and told her to drive her to my school tomorrow. And that's what she ended up doing. She drove my car to basically school the next day. And she asked me, why did I just go inside the car? And I told her how there was men surrounding the car. And then, yeah, one thing led to another. I basically friend zoned her. To this day, sometimes she does message me, but I don't know. I'm not really one for the mafia. And if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I'm just, I, it's just not for me. Anyways, guys, that's basically it for today's story. Make sure you guys do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And like I always say, just full for more embarrassing stories. All right, peace out, guys.